want to get more on this now with Azad Zangana, former economist at the UK Treasury and now European economist at Schroeder Investment Management. And Azad, actually before we get to the banks, I did want to uh, get into the ECB's monthly report. We were just getting uh, news coming out to us on some of the statements that have been made and we'll, we were hearing there about there being considerable downside risks, growth is likely to remain very moderate the rest of the year. Just how worrying is this? Well, it's of course quite concerning because uh, markets are now looking at the growth prospects and linking that in with the debt crisis. Now, we are expecting a quite a solid Q3 GDP numbers across Europe, uh, particularly for Germany and for France. But heading into Q4, that's looking far more uncertain. And then, of course, into 2012, clearly a lot of weakness coming through. And the situation isn't getting any easier for consumers either. No, not at all. Uh, we've had higher inflation coming through um, this year. That's clearly reduced disposable income for households. Right. And then we've had the fiscal austerity hitting them as well. And well, then also, I'm just wondering because the report does say that inflation will remain high, well above 2%. How much of a challenge, how much of a problem is this going to pose for the ECB? Well, it, clearly it's holding them back from cutting interest rates uh, at this stage. Uh, but interest rates are still low. And I, I would say still low enough to be consistent with a, the type of recession that could hit over the next um, few months or e even the next year or so. But there are already many calls for rates to be cut. We didn't get that, of course, at the last meeting. So I suppose this puts them in, in a very... This is, this is a real dilemma they have here because if things get worse, well, then... I mean, should they cut rates and will they? Well, the ECB believes very firmly in its separation principle of trying to fight inflation with interest rates, but then providing unlimited liquidity for the banking system. Mm. And of course, if you look at Ionia or Euribor, it's still trading well below the ECB's base rate, which suggests that actually banks can get access to plentiful liquidity at quite cheap prices. So the base rate being set at 1.5% is not the end of the world no. for, for Europe. There, there is liquidity in the system at lower than base rate prices. But if the economic outlook is worsening, then will they not have will rates not have to be adjusted to to adapt to that if they believe that the worsening economic situation presents downside risk to inflation then of course they will um, cut interest rates again okay so let's then get your thoughts on the european commission strategy which you know we heard jose manuel barroso yesterday talking about the banks and essentially it's about uh, boosting their balance sheets now obviously there are those that are criticizing this position this this way forward if you like what are the risks for the banks if this plan does go ahead? But if the plan goes ahead, clearly it could hit their equity prices. Because what we're talking about is a lack of dividend payments now for a number of years until the balance sheets are repaired. Now, how do these balance sheets become repaired? Either they shrink their balance sheets in terms of the amount of loans that they have, which of course is very detrimental to the European economy, or they begin to raise equity, and that's very difficult at this stage. Now, one positive outlook, which could co still come through, and I think it's being discussed in the run-up to the G20, is the potential for European governments to pump money into the banking system and recapitalize the banking system. I think that's why perhaps equity prices are rising at the moment. When are we going to get a plan on that, something solid, something tangible? We're hoping for sort of November, for the November G20 uh, meeting. There, there's currently discussion about where the money comes from. Yeah. The Germans would really like individual governments to take responsibility for their own banking systems. And then the French government, along with a number of other governments, of course, across Europe, would like the EFSF to take that role or an, an extra fund. To How difficult it. is it going to be to resolve that difference of opinion by November 3rd, though? I think it's going to be very difficult, and I'm yeah. not convinced we will see a bank recapitalization plan in time for November. But at the very least, we should see the expansion of the EFSF. All right. Well, Azad Zangona from Schroeder Investment Management, thank you very much for joining us today.